Good morning guys, how are we all doing? I am Dan from Trading with Dan. This is our Bitcoin morning update. So if you guys wouldn't mind smashing that like button, we shall go straight over to those Bitcoin for our charts. So so yes, Bitcoin on the four hour, we are nice and uh, clearly above our resistance area here. Uh, not managed to get any closing highs above uh, above this close that we had over here. Uh, so that is basically the uh, the next step. If we get that, if we get closing highs over here, then we will quite likely see a move. Uh, well, ultimately towards uh, around twenty six and a half thousand. But obviously, first things first, we've got to close above there. We could uh, we could very well have another pullback into this support area. Test it one last time. Uh, even even as low as a uh, sub twenty three thousand, and then get the get the the catapult to the upside. Obviously, if we do close back below this resistance, uh, then that won't look pretty good. Uh, however, that is not uh, that is not the scenario uh, that I am I am hoping or looking for. We are looking relatively good for a move, even if it even if it only tops out about twenty six and a half thousand. But yeah, things looking good here. Uh, obviously, this is this is crypto. We know that crypto gets uh, gets driven by macro. Um, at the moment, so if we go and have a look at our favourite macro indicator, uh, the SPS, which is the S and P S and P futures, uh, you can see after getting after getting above this resistance, we had a nice a nice pump up, a back test, uh, and then a and then a uh, well a a then a pretty aggressive move up. So a forward check, a back check, and a pay check there. Uh, not quite into our uh, this this uh, resistance area here, but you can kind of see. Uh, the level we actually are at is is basically this horizontal here, uh, which is which is um, it is of significance. So we will draw it in. You can see just here. I mean, it would be a little bit of a zone like that, uh, but we'll just leave it how it is as a horizontal. But yeah, uh, get above there, um, get above and hold above here. Then this is pretty much one of the uh, more important levels. Uh, uh, for the S&P, this one here. If we get above here, and then certainly above these highs here, uh, then yeah, we, we will look really good uh, for a uh, for a uh, well for a, a a medium to long term move even higher. Uh, but yeah, let's not get uh, let's not get ahead of our skis here. Uh, we do know that we are just uh, we are just at the moment pricing out. Uh, well, which is basically a lot of the uh, of the protection is getting sold. The downside protection is getting sold. Therefore, obviously, the dealers can uh, can unwind unwind their protection against the protection, i.e., buy, and then that that is a uh, that is a lot of what is uh, what is drawing stocks higher uh, at the moment. We do have other things going on as well. We've got a uh, 105 handle on the DXY. It is nice to see it lose um, all this level. You could kind of squint and see. Uh, uh, an inverted uh, cup and handle here, uh, and if that is the case, then we could uh, we could do get a, we could get a projected target here, uh, a rough projected target, uh, a rough a rough one. Oh yeah, actually, literally down to uh, just about our support area down here. So uh, no real need to draw it in because we've got that support area uh, drawn in as basically our next major target anyway to the downside. Uh, so yeah, if we get down there, obviously expect to bounce. Maybe we trade in this range a bit and then ultimately come lower. Maybe we start to print a, uh, a even larger uh, inverted head and shoulder. Oh no, it's not inverted. It will be a head and shoulders. In, in a head and shoulders, uh, and then we can trade lower. And if that happens, then it is going to be a, it is going to be a. Uh, uh, an extremely uh, fun time for risk assets, and obviously crypto being the riskiest of risk assets, so therefore uh, the uh, the <laughs> the funnest place to be, uh, the fastest horse in that in in that wild race that will uh, that will be commencing. But obviously, first things first, we've got to see we've got to see um, what happens uh, pretty much into the closes today, uh, and then next week also we've got inflation numbers coming too as well. Uh, the 10 year though is at a very important level um, breaking down <laughs> breaking down from this uh, well from this support area that we've had drawn in for a while uh, that is proven has proven to be pretty important uh, head and shoulders here uh, testing testing trying to break lower and yeah if it, if it does break lower I mean sub two percent yields is on the, on on the cards. Um, obviously, this is going to be driving uh, driving Nascoin. 
because obviously, as we know, Nascoin is a lot of uh, a lot of growth stock. So obviously, it's it's discounted cash flows uh, uh, going into the future, and obviously, the uh, the lower the uh, bond yield. Uh, the uh, the higher the uh, present the net present value of those uh, cash flows uh, going going into the future. Therefore, obviously, uh, this uh, reduction in the ten year uh, is gonna is gonna drive tech stocks and uh, and tech stock is tech stocks are what's most closely related to crypto. So obviously, it's relatively good for us. So we do we do want to see this breakdown um, um, for our crypto, and it is looking like it is looking on the cards. Uh, so, uh, so yes, there is that. Um, what else do you want to look at? Hey, even gold, uh, having a decent move here. Not that gold is a risk asset, but it's interesting to see that when we get a uh, more of a risk on environment, gold, the risk asset is rallying. So, um, not, uh, not obviously what you meant to see there, but hey, uh, but then ultimately we know that we are just a liquidity driven market. We're, all, all it is, we're in a Ponzi scheme. Uh, we're in a fiat uh, Ponzi scheme. Uh, it is just liquidity, and uh, and it seems like the uh, well, the uh, the drawdown in liquidity is uh, is is gonna uh, come to a halt at some point in the future, in the next few months. I don't think the Fed give it say three months time. The Fed will be done uh, raising rates uh, and uh, potentially looking uh, to actually start to reduce them. Maybe the Fed has just been raising rates as quick as it can so it's then got a higher level to then drop from when obviously we have the ensuing recession and uh, potential turn down in the inflation numbers um, oil still hanging around these lows it is interesting to see that off the back of these uh, of this uh, of these moves we're not seeing oil make a move to the upside uh, that is pretty much an indication that uh, it is it is a liquidity driven trade uh, and obviously oil is is actually more driven uh, by real world real world uh, um, like factors uh, as opposed to literally just uh, just fed printing um, what else do you want to look at what else do you want to look at uh, yeah I mean yeah I mean basically uh, this is looking brilliant here maybe we do get pullback maybe we back test this support maybe we trade sideways in this area for a bit uh, we will see but obviously breaking above here is going to look very good breaking above here is already looking very good these are the levels we we're looking at stocks is obviously the first one to pop above its major level uh, the DXY I mean we could probably say it is dropping below these levels uh, so that is obviously what we're looking for and the 10 year about dropping below its important levels so we are getting uh, the moves that we wanted to see some uh, some uh, a serious uh, even if it's a bear market rally a serious bear market rally um, and don't forget this bear market rally in equities if it goes as high as it can do um, it's probably gonna drive crypto uh, to pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty lofty height especially especially our beloved ethereum coin um, because it has the merge coming it has other catalysts coming in anyway um, but yeah ethereum ethereum usd as we can see getting into a pretty uh, important level of resistance i mean if we zoom out uh, we can see the importance of this level this would be an ideal time if the bears are going to take over uh, to drop us down from you realistically were expect us to get uh, much higher than here uh, if we are going to turn down and uh, head head back down to goblin town um, so but obviously on the flip side to that if we break above here then it will be looking uh, very good for more upside and the market will look a lot better then obviously this level first and then this level here once we get once if if once we get back above this level uh then yeah it will it will be looking particularly good uh the uh btc pairing as well uh not looking too bad here we are on a daily we'll go back to the four hour uh you can see um trying to break above this resistance area um yeah i mean as you can see uh, we are in a relatively large sideways range uh, it does kind of look like a uh, one of those trumpets one of those uh, broadening broadening patterns uh, which ultimately could indicate uh, um, we that we then go to new highs new recent highs for this obviously with a lower lower than a lower low and then a recent high in a broadening fashion so I mean realistically above this resistance here is gonna, this is going to start to look ridiculously good and people i think are going to start uh the, the the real fomo into eth is going to come in don't forget we've got the merge coming and that means uh that uh that means that 
obviously once the merge actually happens people will probably actually start staking more than they're even doing now because a lot of people don't think a lot of people in crypto um actually just like bitcoin uh and then they they're there's a lot, there's a lot of people that can st that are still waiting to be sold on eth uh and obviously once we do literally have the proof of stake and you can stake and then also i mean the one of the biggest factors is that the withdrawals are going to be live for a while so it's going to be one way traffic only it's going to be getting locked up even when withdrawals are then allowed in a certain amount of time which could be it could easily be over 6 months after a proof of stake goes live um it's only going to be a certain amount to, uh, per day or per uh, per period of time anyway, uh, just for the stability of the network. And what that means is that there's going to be a massive short squeeze on ETH supply and ETH is potentially going to go absolutely, absolutely mental. Uh, so yes, there is that. Um, let's look at stochastics anyway. Uh, not anyway, but let's look at stochastics. I mean, the main thing with stochastics for us at the moment, though, is that these larger time frames are looking good, moving up from low levels, and on the day-to-day -day basis, it's not gonna, it's not gonna. Um, uh, looking at these is isn't really the focus. The focus for me is is these larger time frames, and are, have we put in a, a, a even if it's just a, a medium-term low, and we go significantly higher and then come back down. But but nonetheless, we are we are looking in like we're in a position to go significantly higher, regardless of what happens after that. So uh, yeah, ten hour gain up there. Uh, Twelve hours still got room to run daily. This is looking very constructive, moving towards the upside still. Two day looking good. Three day. These are the ones that um, I think are indicating that we can we can get to 26k, uh, 26 and a half k, maybe even higher. Three day looking great. Five day great. Weekly good. Uh, it these are looking these are looking great because they've got moving. These are looking good because they moved turned up from a low level, but they do obviously need to get that move towards the upside by weekly. They need to stop moving towards the upside, uh, and then monthly uh, just there doing its thing. But um, realistically speaking, um, we um, we've got a good we've got a good chance we've got a good chance of getting towards 30k 30k in Bitcoin is going to be uh, a stupendously uh, difficult level of a level to get through if you want to have a look at the chart um, it's basically here you can see again uh, similar to where Ethereum isn't far off now it is the perfect level uh, to basically distribute uh, Bitcoin. So maybe we we try we, we flirt with this area for a while, and then ultimately the bears win, take control, and 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 take us down. But yeah, around 30k is going to be uh, as a as a as a bear looking at this is going to be the perfect level. So uh, that is uh, that is probably going to be the battleground, uh, and then so clearly if we break above that hold above there uh then uh then the bears uh battling for that level uh will capitulate uh, and then yeah it'll drive us higher and then i mean their ne their next line in the sand will probably be around there around the 40 to mid 40k so we shall see we shall see what happens it is early days we've got to get this move up to 26k towards 30k first and see what happens there but nonetheless a move from here to 26 and a half k is a pretty significant move towards 30k even more significant move uh things are looking good in the markets even if it is for a bear market rally every single uh finance professional is literally saying that this is just uh this is wrong this rally is wrong it's a bear market rally literally every sing every single one without fail uh and regardless of your macro views anyway um I can, I can certainly say from experience you're better just looking at the charts because the charts know practically everything any individual macro person doesn't know everything uh, and the chart usually tells you what is going on um, before obviously uh, well before people can know what is going on so yeah there you go remember this is not financial advice I'm not a financial advisor always do your own research and I shall speak to you guys soon